Today, we're covering the setup, installation, and usage of Vibe Voice from Microsoft. It is MIT licensed and a big hats off to Microsoft for releasing something that's actually a lot of fun because it actually is pretty freaking entertaining. And this is a cool podcast generation piece of software that comes ready to go. And I'm gonna take you through the steps. This is part of our ultimate local AI guides on Proxmox 9 series. And this one falls into pretty much the extras category. Now, some of the things that you need to have as prerequisites installed for this are of course the first two guides because we are gonna be restoring from our backup. There's a very specific reason that things are done the way they're done with those first two guides, and it's to create a base platform that you can rapidly restore from and install new software on top of without tons of additional configuration needed each individual time. So make sure you followed along with those. You can find all of this stuff at the website and of course, the new Vibe Voice setup guide is there as well with all of the nice steps that you can just copy and paste and be up and running. There are a ton of issues that people are running into and the issues on GitHub that I'm reading about. And if you follow along with this, you will not run into those issues. Uh, definitely, it was funny last time as we ran into what was dubbed exorcist mode. F-L-A-P-P blocking. Extreme. And that was with the 1.5B model, and today we are checking out the full 7B model, which just was released, as well as some code updates. So anything prior to this isn't going to work out. You definitely need to follow along with this guide. So let's get started on that. We're going to go to our backup that we took at the end of the Llama C++ guide, which we have used for restoring for many, many instances now, and we will continue to, like I said, this is definitely something you want to have installed. So you can install that back to your storage of choice and we're gonna call this one Vibe. So next we're gonna restore from that. You don't need to give it 32 gigabytes of system RAM. I just have a lot on the system. Of course, the quad rig, excellent for doing things like this in production parallels. GPUs that you need for this would either be an eight gigabyte GPU or a 24 gigabyte. 20 gigabyte might be able to get you there, but that's kind of an unusual size for being able to run this. So definitely a 3090, 4090, 5090, of course, are all good options. The number of cores that you need is not really 16. I'll just give it 16 because I've got 64 on this system. Uh, make sure you check unique and hit restore. The amount of space you're gonna need for this setup is right around 60 gigabytes. So we'll give it 60 gigabytes by growing the partition a little bit after we have this restored. So we'll come and give ourselves 20 additional gigabytes. It's about 17 gigabytes of disk space for the full model for the large that we're gonna be putting on here. And as far as GPUs, we definitely don't need to have all these GPUs being utilized for this, but I'm just gonna leave it as is. And we're gonna go ahead and start up our container next. Now, when you restore from the backup, of course, it's gonna bring over the IP address that that container had. So we need to adjust that. So I'm gonna take that over to 74, as that's an unused IP address and you don't want IP overlap ever. First off, always run an apt update. And now we're ready to proceed with the installation. Literally, you can just come over directly to this and copy the code starting here and put it in. And what this is doing is installing Python 3 full, pip, and pipinv, which is a shell manager that we're gonna use for this. This is a pretty simplistic little pip environment setup that we're gonna use. Of course, we're also gonna use GitHub to clone the repository. All right, the next thing that we need to do is enter a shell. So just do pipinv, shell all right and then you can install everything and the dependencies here and you're going to need to install flash attention and FFmpeg.
The next thing that you want to do, if you want to run this as an internal service that does not have a Gradio public uh, shareable kind of address, if you want to make sure you don't do that, we're going to make a change to this really quick. So just go into the demo folder and nano gradio underscore demo dot pi. And we're just going to page down all the way to the end. And where it's got the server args here, now, by changing this from 127, which is kind of local on the machine, loop back to 0.0.0, .0 this is just going to bind onto any addresses out there. So now it's going to, regardless if you type the hyphen hyphen share or not, it's going to serve this as a service, not just on the computer. I think most people want to make that change also. So just showing you that really quick here. That's a general Gradio thing that you might want to pay attention to. So next up, we'll come back here a little bit and I'll grab the run command and we will give that a go. Now, if it's the first time that you're running it, it'll download some files also at the same time that it's doing this. If it's not your first time running it, then it should be pretty quick to reload. So you can see how quick this is. It'll take a good deal longer to get this running the first time. And you'll see that it says 0.0.0.0. However, the IP of the machine will also be globbed onto there. So 192.168.1.4074. There we go. Gradio, if you have dark set kind of as your system default, it's going to seemingly not do too hot. So it's best to set that to the light over here. And if you close that, you can now see all the buttons. The dark interface, for some reason, just doesn't seem to work in many Gradio implementations. Some example scripts are down here at the bottom. So if you wanted to go through one speakers, two speakers, or three speakers, of course, four speakers is also an option that you have here. And this is multilingual as well. Although it primarily is going to do the best in English and Chinese, there may be some instances where it can do acceptable-ish in possibly some other languages. So yes, risks and limitations. I would say the biggest one is do not assume this is production quality. And uh, if you send this out there as is, it might have a lot of slop. So make sure you review it. Under advanced settings, 1.3 is definitely where you should leave your CFG scale. If you jack that up, you're gonna run into poltergeist mode. The number of speakers you can adjust here, and you need to have them in this format. So speaker one colon and whatever speaker one would say. So for this, I'm just gonna actually go ahead and select a two speaker one here. And we've got our conversation that is pretty much gonna be between Frank and Carter. We'll just go ahead, hit generate podcast and it will go ahead and start streaming after it has built enough of a buffer. If we take a look over here, we can see the GPU utilization creeping up there. As you can see, 19.5 gigabytes being used right now. So definitely a 20 gigabyte GPU would be cutting it close. 24 gigabyte would be pretty safe if you're especially doing some other stuff also. You would most likely want to have that. Hello everyone and welcome to the Vibe Voice podcast. I'm your host, Linda, and today we're getting into one of the biggest debates in all of sports, who's the greatest basketball player of all time. I'm so excited to have Thomas here to talk about it with me. Thanks so much for having me, Linda. You're absolutely right. You do have to hit stop twice for some reason also. I think that's another bug. Uh, so that was, if you heard at the beginning, that's background music. Every now and then you'll get background music. Certain things like having a hello or an intro that it can detect will cue up background music. Also, Alice apparently invokes lots of background music, but this is just the nuts and bolts video of how to set up with Vibe Voice. This will be part of a production pipeline that'll have comfy UI included with Vibe Voice and some orchestration and stuff in the future. So I hope you look forward to that. Make sure you hit like and subscribe so that you get notified when that comes out. And we've got another hardware video coming up really soon. I know people have been asking me for another hardware overview video, kind of hitting on some of the high points of what to look for in hardware and what you should avoid in hardware. So I've got one of those that'll be probably one of the next few videos out here. If you are looking at using a LLM to generate it, tell it how many speakers you have and give it an example of one of the formats that it needs to put the speakers in and it will adhere to that very well. I've tried this on multiple different ones. Quinn 3 does an excellent job of generating this from also documents. So if you want to put a paper in there, it is very generated on the fly. It's very random 
it is MIT licensed and a big hats off to Microsoft for releasing something that's actually a lot of fun. I really think you've got to install this and have it as one of your options. It actually is pretty freaking entertaining. So definitely try not to get exorcist mode going, but have fun. Let me know in the comments below what kind of stuff you guys are generating. And you need to follow again this guide here, which gets you set up with Olama, Open Web UI, a great user interface for local LLMs. And then after that, our llama.c++ guide that will at the end of that have us create a storage backup that we use for restoring for all of these things. You see how fast this is to get up and running as a result of having that base package. Have a great day. Check you out next time.